are going to leave some things you don't want people to talk about and it's true because I'm going to speak of mathematics tonight. Uh, to be honest, it's the very first time I'm doing stand-up in English. Usually when I'm speaking English it's in conference or when I'm doing research because I'm a mathematician and uh, let me tell you that usually people love very little when I'm in mathematics conference. Um, in fact, I've heard a lot of stand-up uh, stand say that they keep their boring job to do comedy. That's a really beautiful story, and I would like to do the same thing. There's only one trouble, I don't find my job boring. <laughs> I mean, you cannot do mathematics and find it to be boring. You don't become a mathematician by accident. <laughs> I mean, who already made someone laugh by accident? No one? Yeah? Okay. Who already made a new theorem by accident? Okay, it's my point. Um, so, uh, I, since child, I knew I wanted to do mathematics. Because for the right kind of mind, mathematics is entirely in the head. You can figure out everything by yourself again. I mean, you could figure out the derivative of the logarithm, whereas in English lectures, you cannot figure out by yourself the irregular verbs. <laughs> so when the professor saw that I had A in mathematics and D in English, they told me I need to work everything as much as mathematics, which I did. It means that I stopped working everything. <laughs> and what is nice is that I feel like I don't, I never, began to work again. Because you're not working when you just study beautiful things and create some by yourself. Okay, one thing, we must agree on this, mathematics are beautiful. L like a laughing audience, but more eternal. I mean, in one month, we already did every possible job, job, joke, sorry, every possible jokes about Trump election. We know if in 100 years we will ever remember Trump election. We know if in 100 years we will ever remember what an election is. <laughs> and in 100 years, the ratio of the uh, circumference by the diameter will still be pi. I mean, it's not human who chose it, we cannot change it. So. Of course, we want to share with humanity those truths. We are going to be eternal. Humanity we mostly don't care, I know. When I was a child, I thought that the digit of pi were formed by having better and better microscopes. When I was a child, that was a kind of question I thought about. And, uh, no, that's not true. In fact, it's entirely mathematics. You just need a paper and a pen, or a computer nowadays, and you can figure the digits. It's like you have truth about the world without even looking at the world. Imagine doing stand-up comedy without looking at society. <laughs> and, of course, I'm not working on pi, I'm working on things which are more, more complicated. Uh, that's called finite automata. If you're interested, I have 36 hours lectures. <laughs> I'm not sure you'll understand it because it's in French. <laughs> uh, and the truths about automata are not less eternal than the truths about pi. And that's why I want to share them at conference. The trouble is that, okay, so, um, the trouble being that uh, the stand-up stand comedian I am, when I'm speaking at conference, since no one laugh, I think I'm bombing. <laughs> but I like speaking of mathematics and I mean, I'm afraid of death, and I guess that people will remember me more if I do more, find more truth than if I make people laugh. And maybe people will laugh more if I avoid speaking of the fear of death. <laughs> so um, I'm doing this mathematics because, as I told you, it's beautiful. I'm not going doing it because it's useful or, well, it's useful because I'm still happy people are okay to pay me a salary. Um, I, the trouble is that, uh, how to explain what I do, that's really hard to do. 
which is a question no one ever asked me when I'm doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> so I'm going to try to explain it to you like I explained it to my grandfather, so it's really a simple explanation. Um, okay, first take a number, let's say 15. What are the dividers of 15? 3, 5, okay. 3, three times 5, 15, everyone is okay with that? Okay, now I give you a number with a thousand digit. How do you find the dividers? Uh, it's worth, uh, I give you some time because it's worth a million dollars. Really? What? It's the same. The same? <laughs> well, it's. Yes, but sometimes dividers are just really, really big, and you just, it's going to take too much time. We can speak of it after the, after the show if you want. But really, trust me, if people are going to pay a thousand, uh, million dollars for the answer, is that because we really need it. The trouble is that we think that it is no way, it's mathematically impossible. At this very time of the explanation, my grandfather told me that it's because they didn't know it is impossible that they figure out how to do it. No, no, no. There are things mathematicians can prove to be impossible. Well, uh, kind of. I mean, we cannot prove that God is not going on earth giving us past death's pity. Maybe we can ask an oracle for the answer, I, but this we cannot prove it. It's not mathematic. But we can prove that even if uh, it's not a job, by the way. There are really mathematicians working on what we could do if we have a raker. A raker? I'm not sure about the pronunciation. Sorry. As you can guess, I'm French. I guess everyone already guessed at that. Um, so maybe we just cannot do it. And then the great question, what is really, really wonderful about my job, is figure out, figuring out how to prove that it's impossible. Oh, there is a second possibility. Maybe it's possible and you might not just to them to figure out figure it out. Thank you. Thank you.